And, w- and when you're talking to these patients, do you get patients who can sound like they have both? So, you know, you ask them, have you ever had issues with your ears clearing when you fly? And they say, oh, yeah, it's really painful to fly. And then you say, do you ever hear your own voice echoing or do you hear your breath? Um, and they're like, oh, yeah, sometimes I do. What do you make of that? Can people kind of fluctuate from one side of the spectrum to the other? Yes, they can. And they do. And it's much more common (laughs) than we thought, which makes our diagnostic lives very difficult. The most common etiology that will start out with obstructive dysfunction and then eventually lead to patchless is chronic allergic rhinitis. We know that chronic Allergic disease can cause patches of atrophy in the mucosa and submucosa, in the nose and sinuses. So I have the hypothesis that it also occurs within the valve of the eustachian tube, which is an extension of our other sinuses. Uh, And that would certainly correlate with what we see on endoscopic examinations. So uh, in fact, you can have intense inflammation in the nose and and, uh, adenoid torus tubarius orifice of the eustachian tube, but then you look into the lumen and you can see this marked atrophy and the patient can be frankly patchless when they have a runny nose with allergic disease. So if you get this kind of patch of atrophy in the valve, you can become patchless, even though you still have even active allergic rhinitis or or sinusitis. Now, if in the allergic patient, if they are active with their symptoms and congested, they may be completely blocked and obstructed, even to the point of middle ear effusion. But then if their disease is quiescent or they're over-medicated, dehydrated, uh, they, can so- they can switch over to patchless and they can go back and forth, which is very confusing because the patient's always going to say, my ear's just chronically blocked. It's always blocked. So we have to sort those out. Short answer is yes. People can definitely have both or they can have a long history of obstructive, and then they transition to patchless, which is more common. It's not as common to have patients going back and forth, but we have to look out for it. Yeah. So, so for example, they might have they might have had tubes in the past or something that had that had helped, and then now they're having more of the talking in a barrel type of symptoms where it's more patchless full time. That sort of thing progression. Well, that's right. And to add to the confusion. Sometimes a tube will treat a patchless eustachian tube, particularly if they have uh, more autophony of their breathing than the voice. It's more likely to help. So just simply knowing that a tube helped doesn't help us sort out patchless versus obstructive dysfunction. It's all about the autophony and looking at the tympanic membrane to see if it's moving with their, with their breathing, particularly if you block the opposite nostril, so ipsilateral nasal breathing to look for it. 